Historically, the Christian church in its creeds and expressions from the second century on said about the church that it was one, that it was holy, that it was Catholic, and that it was, as another creed added later, a fourth word, apostolic. Now, I spend in this book an entire chapter on what I call the classical four marks. And I believe these are, for good reason, the four marks. I don't think we should add to them or subtract from them. And when they are understood, it will shed light upon what we should pursue together and how we pursue it. First, the writers of the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, said the church was one, not two or three or four or 10,000. It is one. They're not suggesting by that statement that every congregation is somehow intrinsically, federally, or otherwise united. But they are saying that there's a common faith. It's the Christian faith. And every church that preaches and lives out that faith in community and faithfulness to God is part of the oneness of the church. We might put it this way again. To be one is to have in you as a church and as a Christian the very DNA of Christ, the mark of the Spirit, who is one. Secondly, we say the church is holy. Now, many understand holiness in ways that I think are unhelpful at this point. But when the framers of these creeds in the early church said the church was holy, they were saying it was not like any other organization or any other visible entity, that it was called by God to be holy because God is holy first. But secondly, because God is holy, the church is called to live as a holy community, dedicated to God completely, faithful to him, and living a life that is in accord with his will. It's to be holy. Thirdly, the church not only is one and holy, but the church is, what am I saying here? I got I need a, we're going to have to do a cut here. Okay, I just, I just brain, brain, lock, brain lock, okay? The third mark of the church is that it is Catholic. This is the word that for many Protestants is a stumbling block because when they hear the word Catholic, they think that it means simply the church at Rome, the church of the Roman Catholic Church, as we call it. But the word Catholic is a marvelous word. It predates all the arguments about the Vatican and the supremacy of the magisterium and these things that divide Christians. It actually is a general word used as early as the second century AD to describe that church which was Catholicos. It covered the whole world. And thus it was an all-encompassing church. It was present to be ultimately in every place. Revelation says every tribe, nation, and tongue. So it's to cover the whole earth to be Catholic. By the way, the word Catholic is sometimes in Protestant circles, we omit it and use the word Christian in the creed. The problem with that is it's a redundancy to speak of the Christian church because the church is Christian. But one of its unique marks is that it is Catholicly Christian, if I may use that phrase. Finally, later in a creed that added to the words of the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed added a fourth word, apostolic. And I think the importance of the word apostolic is not only to be reminded that the church that we're a part of was formed by Jesus Christ and built upon the teaching of the apostles, but when we say it's apostolic, we are saying we are rooted in the teaching and the doctrine of the apostles, thus the scripture and the tradition that is rooted in the scripture that is faithful to the apostles. An apostolic church, finally, is a historic church. It doesn't exist somewhere out in space and somewhere in our imagination or unseen. It's visible and it's seen and it covers the earth and it is one and it is to be holy and it is apostolic. This is how we know how we should see the church, understand the church, and think about it in a historically and biblically Christian way.